Hello everyone. So, since the past 7 lectures, we are discussing about sustainable product service system design methods and tools. So, today when we have already finished about discussing this particular methodology, we discussed all the tools and so on. So, we will do a quick summary to understand the whole concept in one glance. So, the MSDS methodology for system design for sustainability. It, for this the reading material is product service system design for sustainability book. It is a freely available uh, book. So, what are the objectives of this methodology? So, the objective one is do uh, existing system assessment, then set the sustainability priority even in a given context, then generate sustainability focused ideas for sustainable product service systems and finally check or visualize the sustainability improvement or worsening of developed concepts as compared to the existing system. So, what are the stages of MSDS? Stage 1 is strategic analysis, stage 2 is when we explore opportunities, then we do system concept design, then we do system detail design and finally, we do communication. We also studied that strategic analysis. So, all the other steps remaining same in the context of strategic analysis, we can have two contexts. In context 1, there is a promoter or stakeholder who is the main driver of the project. So, this promoter or stakeholder comes to the designer or comes to you asking that can you help us design a sustainable product service system for our company. In this particular context, of course, the promoter or the stakeholder has a clear cut idea that sustainable product service system is a kind of a concept or they have already implemented it or they at least know about product service system design. It might be also a situation where uh, say for example, the promoter or stakeholder approaches to you saying that we have certain kind of difficulty or we want this new design to come up and then you can also suggest them this SPSS. How is it different from the second context? In the second context, there is no one stakeholder that can be identified as the primary stakeholder. So, it is a multi stakeholder system or as we call it, it is a socio economic ecosystem, wherein the economic activities of the community is dependent on their social ways of living. So, like the craft sector, the farming sector, the uh, in the handloom sector and so on. So, in the first context, uh, there is at least one or a group of promoters or stakeholders and you um, can design it for them. Whereas, in this context, it is there are multiple stakeholders, nobody knows who is the main, you do not know who is the main whom to you target and it their economic activities are deeply ingrained in their social way of living. So, the basic structure of the MSDS method with respect to all these stages that we discussed consists of. So, first let us take the strategic analysis when a promoter or stakeholder is the main driver of the project. So, in this case in order to do the strategic analysis first our aim is to obtain information necessary to facilitate the generation of sustainable system innovation ideas. How do we obtain this innovation, uh, this information? First by analyzing project proposals and outline the intervention context because we know these project proposals and uh, we will interview them, we will identify what are the uh, intervention context. Then we will analyze the context of reference, so which is like the existing context. So, we will try to understand the existing context and we will try to further define the intervention context. Then we under, try to understand the caring structure of the system, caring structure of the system in terms of technological aspects, social aspects, economic as aspects and ecological aspects. This particular report helps us to understand that in the given context of reference, what is the mm, mm, caring structure of the system, what is the boundary conditions. So, it gives us further idea, further idea to refine our intervention context. 
then we also try to identify cases of sustainable best practices why we try to do that so that we can benchmark our new design and also our existing system against the cases of best uh, sustainable best practices in that particular domain many a times there might be no such solutions available in that case we have no choice but to skip this particular uh, step the next process is analyze sustainability of the existing system and determine priorities for the design intervention in view of sustainability that completes our strategic analysis that is we have now obtained the information necessary to facilitate the generation of sustainable system innovation ideas because we know about the project promoters we know about the context we know about the um, caring structure of the system we also know about sustainable best practices and we have also benchmarked our existing um, system on the criteria for sustainability and we have determined our design priorities in the context of those dimensions and sub dimensions of sustainability we also discuss lots of tools in order to do each of these processes let's look at the other strategic analysis when no one stakeholder can be identified as the primary stakeholder and it's a multi stakeholder system socio economic ecosystem so in this context again strategic analysis aims to obtain the information necessary to facilitate the generation of sustainable system innovation ideas but in order to do this my process is the first processes uh, to first two processes change so my analysis of cases of sustainable best practice and analysis of sustainability of existing system and determine priorities for the design intervention in view of sustainability those two processes remain the same but the difference that comes in this context from the previous context is there is no stakeholder no one stakeholder no one main stakeholder and uh, the whole business or the whole activity the economic activity happens in a very distributed manner so just think of a craft sector just recall the swalkuchi silk handloom sector example that we took so in that case first it is very important for designers that we need to understand okay what is the ecosystem so first step is project socio economic ecosystem analysis so how do we do that we have to understand who all are the stakeholders who all are mm, mm, the mm, main stakeholders who are the mm, stakeholders which help these main stakeholders in achieving the targets we then try to identify what are their major contributions what are their mm, value systems what is mm, the gains that they want what are the pains that they are suffering we also try to understand the existing infrastructure because in many of these contexts of the socio economic ecosystem a big hurdling block is the infrastructure so the best people to gather the information in this case is either local administrators or local visionaries because they have a bird eye view of the whole ecosystem so they can be the good starting points they introduce you to the actors the actors because they are being introduced by somebody who is local to their ecosystem they have much greater trust on the designers who are coming into the picture again in this case as you can see the second step is defining intervention context this is an extremely important step because there are so many stakeholders the intervention context definition does not come from so easily when it is like one main stakeholder the intervention context definition comes way much more easily here in this case the designer has to put in a lot of effort try to bring in all the stakeholders together create have lots of focus group discussions and define the intervention contents context with mutual consent from all the stakeholders because each and every stakeholder has very competing interest in the system so we have to be very very careful at this defining intervention context we might come up with the most beautiful sustainable product service system solutions but if it is not 
acceptable to the stakeholders, our whole design will fail. Hence, defining intervention context in this situation is one of the most crucial um, event which determines the success and failure of your project to a great extent. Again, there are lots of tools to do this particular activity which had been presented to you. Once we are done with the strategic analysis, now we have the information which is required to uh, facilitate generation of sustainable system innovation ideas. Always be careful of the fact that we are talking about sustainable. So, we are talking about sustainable system innovation. We are not talking about product design. We are not talking about only service design. What we are talking about is system innovation, system design which will constitute which will be formed with a product as well as a service. So, once this is done, our next step is let us try to explore the opportunities. So, how do we explore opportunities? The aim of this particular stage is to make a catalog of promising strategic possibilities available or in other words a sustainability design orienting scenario and or or set of sustainability promising system ideas. How is the exploring opportunity stage different from designing system concepts? So, the difference between an idea and a concept is so an idea helps to solve a small part of a problem. So, you have a big problem you cannot have one idea which solves that whole big problem, but you divide the problem into many components. So, say for example, in our sustainability design exam, the SDO example that we took of fresh water PSS, we were taking each and every component. Okay, so, the filter is a component which requires to be changed quite often and it gets clogged because of many different aspects, reducing the life of the whole product also reducing the efficiency of the mm, product. So, that was one component of the problem. So, we pick up that one component of the problem and we try to generate mm, promising strategic possibilities on how to deal with it. So, there will be certain aspects which will be related to redesign of the filter, but the filter is getting damaged not because of the filter itself, not because of the product itself. So, here comes a strategic ideation possibility. So, we try to think of all those system components where we can change and as a result an entire system change happens. So, say for example, organizing regular monthly check checkups of the filter or say mm, doing an intervention at the mm, main source of the water. You put in a certain kind of a purifier which ensures that large uh, dirt particles do not enter into the filter. So, mm, that is the difference between ideas and concepts. So, when ideas, ideas start try to solve a part of the problem where we have broken down the big problem into chunks and a concept is something in which we bring together multiple ideas and give one holistic solution. So, in exploring opportunities, our target is to pick up individual problems in this big problem and try to come up with systemic ideas, service ideas as well as product ideas to solve the problem. Then come, so in order to achieve this, in this particular uh, stage, our processes involved are generating sustainability oriented ideas. So, we use the SDO toolkit to do that and we finally outline a design oriented sustainability scenario once our idea generation is complete. Once we have generated all the ideas, we are ready to create something which is related to a scenario. So, which is like the bigger concept. So, I will combine couple of ideas and try to build up certain sustainability design oriented scenarios. I might come up with 3 to 4 different scenarios which have combined many of these ideas together. Once this step is done, then we get into designing the system concepts. So, the aim over here is to determine one or more system concepts oriented towards sustainability. 
it is always good that if you can come up with multiple concepts that improves the um, uh, each and every concept you can also draw up ideas from one concept which you might think is a better but in case you have lack of time then you can also come up with only one concept just because it, there is lack of time so what we do is we select clusters and single ideas which we generated in our previous context the exploring opportunities then we develop our system concepts and then we do an assessment so in this phase where we are designing system concepts how is it different from the next step which is designing and engineering a system the difference lies in this designing system concepts what we try to do is we pick up the single ideas or group of ideas from exploring opportunities phase and we cluster them together to form a concept now for this concept to be produced in the market you need to further detail it in terms of economics in terms of social aspects in terms of the engineering aspects so that's what we do in the next stage designing and engineering the system so in uh, def- designing system concepts i come up with develop system concepts i do an assessment of all the concepts that i mm, came up with on the environmental social ethical and economic assessment after doing this assessment i would be able to select the best concept i might also see that out of the three concepts that i have developed concept 1 is best but concept 3 has certain aspects to it which is giving it say very good strength on the social dimension i can also see can i borrow those uh, aspects from concept 3 and bring it to concept 1 or not thereafter we go into the engineering and uh, detailing of the system so detailed system design uh, we then again do a environmental and socio ethical and uh, economic assessment of this detailed design using our sto radar diagram how much detailed it should be it should be so detailed that anybody who reads your detailed uh, report which details the uh, mm, interactions details the system how it is going to be created who is going to do what in the system what is going to be produced who is going to own the product product who is going to provide the service how the payment modalities ha- is going to happen you have to detail them to the level that anybody who takes your report can implement it into the uh, field finally the last step of the msds method is where you communicate all these aspects all the sustainability improvements that you have brought in how you have brought in how the system has to be implemented all these needs to be communicated so you draw up reports to communicate the general and above all sustainable characteristics of the system design the communication part of it depends largely on who your audience is going to be say for example your audience is going to be a funding agency you will pitch it accordingly if it is going to be a certifying agency you are going to give them communication documents as per the requirements of the certification organization if say you are going to give this as a proposal to a company so that they can fund it as per their csr projects then again it has to be a very different kind of communication say you want to just you have all the funding you have done a great job and you want to tell the whole world that see i have done a great work and you can replicate my work then again the communication has to be modified accordingly so these were the basic structural elements of the msds methodology this helps you to create the whole system map so the benefit of this structure as i showed you again a summary of all the processes and stages involved let's also see that this is a very modular structure you are given the freedom to make changes to take certain aspects to not take certain aspects because they all depend on your context they also depend on the amount of resources time money and human uh, resources that you have at a given instance so at the procedural stages so you had 
the strategic analysis, exploring opportunities, designing system concepts, designing and engineering the system and communication, the five stages. So, in all the procedural stages, you can use all of them. So, all stages can be used or certain stages can be selected according to the particular requirements of the project. Say for example, strategic analysis has already been done by your client, then of course, you can drop that particular stage. Say at the designing the concept stage only, you did the design and the detailing together. Then in that case, many of these steps will merge. There are lots of tools which have been mentioned for each and every processes and sub processes that we are going to use. You can select the given tools, you can also bring in your own tools. So, say for example, you want to conduct a participatory design session and you assume that in this participatory design session, if I conduct it in a manner that people start playing games and when they are playing games, they come up with definition of the problem context. So, that is you are bringing in this game design tools or game storming tools, you can bring in body storming tools, wherein people start enacting what they are supposed to do. So, although those tools are not specifically designed for this particular method, but as per the requirement of the context, you can always bring in tools that you think are more appropriate for the given process. Also, you do not necessarily need to go through all the tools. You can pick up the tools which are most important for you. I will shortly also show you a selection of the most important tools which in my experience one should not skip, one should do it to get better results. Then comes dimensions of sustainability. We are concerned about all the three dimensions as in the SDO toolkit you have already seen it has the environment, economic and socio-ethical dimension. All the dimensions are there, but the tool gives you the possibility to set different priorities. Even within the say the environmental dimension, there are mm, six sub dimensions. So, you can set different priority level to system life optimization. Mm, say system life optimization gets high priority in your context but waste minimization gets a low level priority. So, all those possibilities is offered by this particular tool. Hence, it is also called as modular structure. You can of course, you can bring in other tools and you can also bring in other activities which can become part of this methodology and is happening because of your current context. So, as we told that there are three dimensions, so the eco-efficient VSS, it talks about system eco-efficiency, which is about system life optimization, transportation or distribution reduction, resource reduction, waste minimization, valorization, conservation or biocompatibility and toxicity reduction. So, you can set different priority levels to each of these uh, sub-dimensions. Then comes social equity and cohesion, improve the employment or working conditions, you improve the equity and justice in relation to stakeholders, enable a responsible or sustainable consumption, favor or integrate the weaker and marginalized, improve social cohesion, empower enhance local resources. The third dimension, the economic sustainability, so you look at market position and com competitiveness, profitability or added value for companies, added value for customers, long term business development or risk, partnership or cooperation, macroeconomic effects. So, in this particular tool, all the three dimensions are being considered. Hence, the chances that uh, you come up with a sustainable solution is much higher because you are talking about your deliberately trying to design at the confluence of all the three dimensions. So, what are the key tools for the sustainability orientation which will which uh, in my experience you should always try to incorporate. Because this is a long methodology, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of resources to uh, go through. 
I would suggest that in case you you are all of us always have a project timeline. So, it is always good that you put in certain amounts of time. So, say for example, your entire time available for doing a particular project is 12 hours, you allocate a couple of hours for strategic analysis. So, say I allocate out of this 12 hours, 2 hours for strategic analysis, 2 hours for exploring opportunities. I allocate some 8 hours for designing the system and detailing the system and the rest for communication if any if it is required. That helps you to keep yourself under check that I do not run out of time. What are the key tools that you should not skip? One of the most important because you are doing system design. So, you just cannot skip this tool. You have to do the systems map. You have to make this systems map multiple number of times. So, a systems map it is made in two steps. Step 1 is where you list down all your stakeholders who are the providers and all the stakeholders who are customers. So, as we had discussed we use different kinds of icons, we use the text below that, we also use different colors, providers different colors and customer different color. Customers can be again business to uh, customer or business to business. So, this is the step 1 of system map where you identify all the stakeholders and this is the step 2. This is called as the energy flow diagram in a uh, systems map. Why energy flow? Because it shows all the material flow, it shows the information flow and it shows the financial flow and the labor performance. So, between each and every stakeholder you uh, by using these uh, arrows you say what is flowing between them and you write on top of it what is in you describe what is flowing. You can also put down a number. So, this is step 5. This also gives the reader an idea where to start from. Okay, I will start from 1 and I can go on reading serially because it is a pretty complicated map to read through. You also try to show who are the, what is the partnership of providers, what is the product ownership. So, not necessarily. So, in this case the product ownership is here and this large box depicts the, the partnership of providers. So, this one is an example of product oriented uh, PSS. So, as a result the product no longer is owned by the providers, but the product is owned by the customer. But again in this particular context my end customer is a farmer and this one is also a service provider. So, depending on your system you will create what is it mean for your particular system. You will create one systems map where of the existing uh, scenario, then you will ke create another systems map of the um, uh, new scenario that you created. So, say if you have three concepts for sustainability, you will create three systems map. When you do the detailed design, you again create another systems map of your final design. So, minimum two systems map in case you do the existing systems map and then you do the final systems map. It might be also very helpful that uh, the when you do the analysis of the uh, best practices sustainability cases, the step from strategic analysis, if you can do a systems map for those best case examples also it will be very good because it helps you to identify what are the elements, what are the flows in those systems that you could qualify them as mm, best practices in the context of sustainability. Another very very important tool which should not be skipped in this whole process is the exploring customer need. As we had already mm, discussed the very basics for sustainable product service system design is we try to switch our focus from designing products to designing for customer satisfaction. Hence, we have to understand what is the need of the customer, what is that which satisfies the customer. Hence, this is the 
another step a very important step in this whole process which should not be skipped. So, how do we do this exploration of customer needs? So, there are two steps step one is market definition where you put your PSS that you are going to design in the center then you create a boundary all around it what will be inside your boundary. So, what will be your uh, PSS the market definition. So, you put that inside and what it will not be you put outside. It is very important to put what it will not be outside because it gives you a much clearer picture. So, when I see it is meant for domestic use and it is not meant for commercial use in the subsequent stages I can also decide say for example, is a small business with 4 to 5 employees equivalent to domestic use because that is not so much uh, commercial use. So, uh, these uh, meanings have a lot of implication on how are you going to design your system, how are you going to approach your customers um, and so on. The next step of exploring customer needs is the means and chain analysis. This is also one step which takes considerable amount of time. So, you have to try to understand what are the concrete attributes, abstract attributes, functional consequences, psychosocial consequences, the instrumental value and the terminal value. So, in this particular map terminal value is something that you will reach at the end of it. So, which is basically the end goal and value that you are going to give out of your uh, SPSS. In order to start this particular uh, means and chain analysis, it is usually helpful if you can start from the abstract attribute level. Uh, why so? Because in the abstract attribute level, so like we discussed in the case of fresh water PSS that I want safe drinking water. Safe drinking water is an abstract concept. What do I do from that particular abstract uh, attribute is define the concrete attributes. So, safe drinking water mm, can imply mm, no microorganisms in the mm, water, no chemical mm, in the water. So, in order to remove the chemical say I have to mm, incorporate mm, process A, process B and process C of purification. In order to get rid of all the microorganisms, I will have to mm, use some process D. So, they become part of the concrete attributes. Hence, we always start or it is always better to start at the abstract attribute level. You can involve all your stakeholders or after interviewing your stakeholders, you can yourself sit down and try to do this means and chain analysis and once it is done, you can go back to your stakeholders and discuss and make modifications accordingly. So, from abstract uh, attributes, we go into identifying what are going to be our uh, concrete attributes. Then from abstract attributes, I go to identifying my functional consequences. So, due to each of those abstract attributes, what is the functional uh, consequence? From there, what is the psychosocial consequence? As a result, the instrumental value created and terminal value created. Another important uh, stage is the interaction storyboard. What you do in an interaction storyboard is you describe an action, you describe another action, you describe another action. So, insert maximum 4 actions, you try to say which are the actors involved in this particular um, action. So, place an image that describe the action outlining the actors involved with the corresponding colors indicated in the legend. So, we will be using the same kind of legends that we have used in our systems map. What it helps to identify is the kind of interaction which is happening. So, you can create the instruction storyboard for the existing system which shows how the different stakeholders are interacting with each other for a given action. Not necessarily you have to do it for all the actions because that will be a very huge interaction storyboard, but for the key um, uh, actions you can create the interaction storyboard. Again you will have to make an interaction storyboard when you have come up with your ideas for 
सस्टेनेबल ओरिएंटिंग डिजाइन सिनेरियोस सो इन दैट पर्टिकुलर कॉन्टेक्स्ट यू हाईलाइट दोज इंटरक्शन विच आर एक्चुअली ब्रिंगिंग इन सस्टेनेबिलिटी बिकॉज दे आर द की वंस विच नीड टू बी एलाबोरेटेड एंड नीड्स टू बी हाईलाइटेड एंड थ्रॉट थ्रू मच नाइसली सो अगेन दिस इंटरक्शन स्टोरी बोर्डिंग यू माइट हैव टू डू मिनिमम टू टाइम्स वन फॉर द एग्जिस्टिंग एंड वन फॉर द न्यू एंड इट माइट ऑल्सो हैपन एज मेनी टाइम्स एज फोर टाइम्स सो वंस फॉर द एग्जिस्टिंग सिनेरियो सेकेंड टाइम फॉर द बेस्ट केस सस्टेनेबिलिटी सिनेरियो दैट यू हैव आइडेंटिफाइड से यू हैव आइडेंटिफाइड टू और थ्री दैन यू विल डू इट फॉर ऑल टू और थ्री सो इन दैट पर्टिकुलर कंटेक्स यू ओनली ट्राई टू हाईलाइट दोज इंट्रैक्शन विच आर सस्टेनेबिलिटी ओरिएंटिंग इन ऑर्डर टू सेव योर टाइम देन यू डू इट वेन यू हैव डन योर अपॉर्चुनिटी एक्सप्लोरेशन ऑफ द अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट यू हैव एक्सप्लोर देन वेन यू हैव डन वेन यू आर डन विद द डिजाइन डिटेलिंग यू शो अनदर इंट्रैक्शन स्टोरी बोर्ड सो दिस इज द मैक्सिमम केस द मिनिमम केस इज फॉर एग्जिस्टिंग एंड द फाइनल सिनारियो the sdo toolkit is another very very important tool and this is like the heart and soul of the whole process so should not be mm, avoided uh, this toolkit will help you to mm, mm, give priorities to the different uh, dimensions the environmental socio ethical economic sustainability mm, it also helps you to generate ideas the sdo toolkit helps you to generate ideas which are oriented towards system design and service design why so because we are trying to deviate ourselves from the traditional way of uh, improving product related innovation what we are interested in how do i satisfy the customers need of course when you have to implement it for the products that are required you have to design those products as well but our major focus is on the system design on the service design which can so in the system along with the service you will put in the product so that the customers needs are satisfied so when you are generating ideas be very very careful that when you are on the system tab you generate ideas which are at the system level and when you are at the service tab you generate ideas which are at the service level mm, say for example when i say smart object enabled service which detects filter getting blocked and send service engineer to clear the filter so here you can see that okay i started with smart object smart object is no object it's like an entire ecosystem in itself then i'm also saying that it detects uh, the filter is getting blocked and it sends service engineer a message that the service engineer has to come and the service engineer has to attend that particular um, problem within one day's time so that is what is meant by a system idea so a part of the problem which was related to my question complement product or infrastructure with services for their maintenance repairability and substitution so for that i came up with this systems idea that there is a smart object which detects problem which notifies a service engineer and the service engineer's employment contract says that you have to go and attend to that service problem within one day once this particular you know, whole chart is filled the sdo toolkit also helps you in doing an assessment it is a qualitative assessment it is not a quantitative assessment in order to do a quantitative assessment you should go and do a life cycle assessment the problem of doing a life cycle assessment in these contexts is many times you might just not have data to do it so as a result the strength of this qualitative assessment is also very high it at least gives you a way much more simpler tool to do an assessment you can do this assessment yourself but it is better if you do this assessment with the stakeholders involved because when they read through your project report they might be better able to because they are part of that ecosystem they are daily dealing with it they might be also able to bring in useful inputs to you 
even this SDO toolkit diagram this has to be done couple of times. So, the first radar diagram you prepare for the existing in the best cases that you have identified. As per the SDO toolkit you are supposed to identify two best cases if that is possible. So, first uh, radar diagram is prepared. So, I try to identify um, uh, how good or how bad it is on the each of these parameters. So, this is for the environmental dimension, this is for the socio-ethical dimension, this is for the economic dimension. So, I try to identify how um, are they worse as compared to my existing scenario or there is no improvement as compared to my existing scenario or there is incremental improvement or there is radical improvement. If there is an incremental or radical improvement, I can see how can I adopt that particular part of the system into my redesign so that I can also achieve radical improvement in sustainability from the existing scenario. So, that is point 1 when you make your radar diagram, point 2 you make your radar diagram when you are trying to do an assessment of the concepts that you have designed. So, say you design three concepts, you will do a uh, uh, SDO uh, radar diagram for all the three concepts that gives you a comparative idea like uh, which of these concepts performs way much better on sustainability parameters. And then finally, of course, you will do a radar diagram for your existing sorry for your final design. Another important tool this uh, tool can be skipped, but if you bring this tool into your uh, process, what it helps you is to expand your uh, system design. So, say we started with fresh providing fresh drinking water, but this by using this tool the system satisfaction system map which tries to identify what all other things I can push my system into with minor modification gives way much more greater utilization of my system. It also reaches me out to a way much more larger market segment. So, uh, as in this example my fresh drinking water it um, expanded into fresh water for shower, fresh water for washing clothes, fresh water for cleaning in kitchen. So, this satisfaction system map helps you to um, broaden the scope of your uh, system design and um, your system can reach to much wider uh, target audience. So, if you do that is the advantage you have. Another uh, tool which can uh, enrich your concepts further, uh, this is not uh, one tool which is like a must have tool, but this tool helps you in enriching your idea further. So, if you have time, so please go ahead with using this particular tool. What this tool helps the PSS innovation matrix, you try to map ok what are the customer markets, customers and markets available, what are their needs, what are the visible needs, what are the in sorry what are the visible customers or mask markets, what are the invisible ones, what are the visible needs, what are the invisible needs of those needs of the visible needs what are met and what are not met and of the visible customers who all are served and who all are not served. When you put this thing into the matrix and you start putting in your idea, your target should be reaching this corner which gives you a huge competitive um, advantage. Why? Because now you are able to target invisible needs, needs which were not visible till now and hence they were not met and markets which were till now not visible and were not served. So, you are designing a solution over mm, this space. So, obviously, your product will perform, mm, your PSS will perform very nicely, it will have a competitive advantage and it will also give you ok, is the transition very drastic? Are there available mm, technology or available solutions which can be adopted to fit into my solution? So, this matrix help you to determine all those aspects. Then comes the polarity diagram. I would always suggest that this is another must have tool. Why so? This tool helps you two ways. Firstly, it helps you to put your ideas on a 2 by 2 
matrix. So, you can put opposites distributed manufacturing versus centralized manufacturing. You can put community product ownership versus fresh product ownership. So, you will have many of these polarity diagrams. It depends on your concept and what all you think is important. So, after you have done your idea generation in the exploring opportunity stage, it is very important to create a polarity diagram, wherein on the polarities you put the opposing conceptual frameworks. Thereafter, you put your ideas, visions or cluster of ideas that you have generated into this polarity diagram. So, it helps you to see okay, where my ideas are lying. If I see uh, my idea lies here, but I see more opportunity over here, can I bring this idea over here? So, that gives you further uh, gives your creativity further boost. It also tells you that what are the disadvantages over here? What are the advantages over here? So, I know that I cannot have distributed manufacturing. I have to go for centralized manufacturing because of cost considerations. But I know sustainability is higher, environmental sustainability is higher if I would have gone for distributed manufacturing. So, how in this particular concept because this is more of a viable concept and now I want to go into this concept, how can I bring in situations which can bring greater sustainability in the manufacturing or greater sustainability in transportation or can I combine the best of both worlds. So, some uh, components happen in a distributed manufacturer, others happen in a centralized manufacturing fashion. So, the polarity diagram helps you in expanding your ideas and also knowing what are the drawbacks of what are the sustainability related drawbacks of each of those ideas and then you can try to think of ways in which you can counteract them. Once the polar, so the polarity diagrams they can be done while you are trying to design the system concepts as well as when you are trying to do the uh, system detailing. Uh, this is uh, where you try to map what are the core functionalities, the basic functionalities, added value functionalities, sub functionalities these are always they have to be part of the mm, detailed system design. So, you cannot avoid uh, mm, mm, this particular step is also very important because it gives you a clearer more clearer picture you are yourself your idea gets more and more refined. Also, this particular step is very less time consuming. So, uh, going ahead with this step is a mm, good idea very important you have to do a feasibility check. Feasibility check has to be done in terms of technology necessary, also in terms of implementation or feasibility. So, I can have small change necessary or no new technology necessary, I can have medium level, I can have big change necessary. Why it is important? Not necessarily anything which requires big change should be avoided or anything which does not require mm, any change should be mm, embraced. It is not for that we have to know what are the resources available at hand. Can we uh, should we go here or should we go here or should we stay here. We have to also consider our competition if like if we are over here and the competition is going to catch up with us within 6 months then all our effort is not very fruitful. So, hence why not be over here. Then comes the feasibility or implementation. So, there is small feasibility or implementation is very difficult or there is medium feasibility and or implementation is possible and high feasibility or implementation is simple. These two are different aspects something which has requires a big technological change might be feasible. The big techno uh, it might also be like medium feasibility only in case when this big change is uh, has small feasibility then we should reconsider whether we really want to go ahead with it or not. So, this particular uh, diagram helps you to check feasibility in terms of technology as well as in terms of implementation. So, uh, we have to do this. 
the other way in which you can look at it is looking at it as a portfolio diagram so where you can put sustainability uh, potential because we are talking about uh, sustainable uh, product service system design so in our previous slide we compared technological fees uh, technological uh, change requirement and the feasibility or implementation level but it's also very important that we check on to the sustainability potential say something has very high degree of feasibility but on the sustainability potential it lies somewhere really low so it is somewhere over here of course that's not the solution that we want to take because our purpose is to go for a sustainable solution hence we want to target anything which lies in this zone because the sustainability potential is either good or it is okay so not much change and i am still i have a feasibility option possible all these options say for example in this quadrant where the sustainability is high but feasibility or implementation is difficult or feasibility is low in that case i might consider is it that if i take this keep this strategy for a long term option will is that a viable option we can try to think in those courses as we started with the definition of product service system design so the sustainability in this sustainable pss is brought in in a manner that it is in the economic interest of the providers to be sustainable hence to get that we need to know what each stakeholders motivation is so this stakeholder motivation matrix i can create as my end result as my when i am doing my system detail design i can create this stakeholder motivation matrix where i try to identify what is the motivation why will a particular actor there will be multiple actors why will an actor want to participate into it what will be the contributions made by each what will be the contributions received by them from another other actors and what are the potential areas of synergy or conflict so we will list down all our actors so at the confluence i have the what it is meant for actor 1 to do uh, those activities and here in say uh, when i am talking about actor 2 with respect to actor 1 so here i will put down elements which are of actor 1 so actor uh, um, actor 1 versus actor 2 the motivation the contribution the contributions uh, made the contributions received and synergy or conflict and here it is for actor 2 for themselves what are some of the uh, key uh, uh, tools from the uh, msds methodology which needs to be um, uh, incorporated in order to um, be able to complete your project within the given time frame you can set different uh, timing so you can say i will spend 1 hour for doing this particular matrix 2 hours for another matrix or say 1 month for doing a matrix 2 months for doing another matrix then you will be better able to do justice to all of those steps each step has their own uh, relative advantages and they have been those tools have been built into it uh, so that you can achieve the best possible sustainability oriented uh, product service system design in one of the projects which was related to agricultural machinery design where we tried to apply this entire msds methodology it took us around 4 months of time to complete all the stages of the this methodology within this 4 months we also did the engineering design of the agricultural machinery so this particular project also involved around 30 different stakeholders so this gives you an approximate idea regarding the scale of people involved regarding the time involved so say if you take up a student project when we use this methodology in 
uh, our students projects. So, usually a student can uh, finish applying this methodology in a semester's uh, time. So, that brings us to the end of uh, this uh, uh, sustainable product service system design method. So, we will meet next week with another module. Thank you.